Hello to all uh, Bagheera fans. Uh, I'm here with uh, Martin Kolotz, the boss of uh, Bagheera team. And uh, we have a little chit chat about Dakar and the uh, first half that just finished because we are in uh, Riyadh for the rest day, which is a tricky name for the day that uh, mechanics will never stop. <laughs> But uh, Martin, tell me, what, uh, what would you say to, to our fans about the first half and how you're happy with the performance? Firstly, hi everybody. Oh. About the Dakar, first half, half of the Dakar. Oh, obviously, it could have been better, it could have been worse. But by the end of the day, it is like this. Uh, we are battling some, some issues, kind of unexpected issues, and we, we can even say the bad luck. Even though I don't know what is the bad luck, and what is, that, that's the result. Uh, we had uh, we had unlucky technical issues, some uh, unnecessary damages on the both cars, uh, either in P3 category, on the trucks, the the damage on the car after the fire two days ago is more than extensive. Is uh, the car is half damaged and half burned, even though we thought that the car is uh, is repairable over one night, and we tried, uh, but. It didn't happen, so we must have bring some uh, additional spare parts from Dubai. But overall, so we are here tomorrow. Both cars will stay on the starting line of the stage number seven, and we will do our best to, to finish the car as best as possible. Before the car, we announced that uh, we did the most and we had the best uh, preparation for for Dakar 2022 in the whole history of our participation. We announced that we take part with two trucks and two canems. And uh, right before the start, uh, we had to uh, withdraw uh, Theo Calavet, the French talented driver. How did influence uh, the current situation in the half? Overall, uh, I had to honestly say, the deep down from my heart, that he did really all he could to be to be prepared for for Dakar 2022 in the best shape possible. So our, our Dakar unit permanently in uh, in Dubai and Saudi Arabia, we did uninterrupted uh, testing program. We've been testing, we've been participating in races. Uh, we did a lot of technical innovations. Uh, the drivers they they train. They've been sitting in the in cars and trucks. Uh, so many hours, like never before. It's, uh, we did, we did all we could. Regarding Theo, we have been planning and strategizing our policies for, for two trucks, where Theo, as a newcomer to Dakar, supposed to do his job uh, in terms of uh, helping him to, to Ignacio. It didn't happen because uh, Theo got injured and on the top of that he got, got COVID. And, and they're supposed to be here today. Uh, last Tuesday, he finally got uh, negative uh, on his PCR, and two days later, he got he got twice positive again. So yeah. yesterday, we canceled his ticket. And even though he liked to be with the team for second half of the car and to be here, to be here with us today, that's it. It's like this. We have to mention that uh, when we announced that Theo Kava will, will join the Dakar family for the first time. It was a massive boom in France that uh, he will participate. He got such a great support for, from everybody and suddenly such disappointment. Uh, I personally fe felt really sorry about him, no matter what cost uh, it was and what impact it had on the team uh, currently because we don't have to mention that uh, participated with one truck and two truck is a big difference. Yeah, it's really a sad story. Personally, it's a sad story because he's been really prepared. He worked hard. Then he's running in the forest. He's sleeping. He's uh, half breaking his wrist. Then we try to do our best to overcome the injury, and he's, we've been still hoping that he can he can start the car. Important is that it happened two days before Christmas, right, yeah, or three days before, days before Christmas. Christmas. And they've been training it earlier. And uh, fine, we, we've been still hoping, and they've been hoping that he can overcome, he can drive, drive the car with some limitation. And then 26, he got uh, he got sick with high fever. Bam! He got 
COVID positive. It was massive disappointment for him. So he got COVID and uh, he's getting ready. He's hoping to join the team, at least to be here, uh, booking his ticket. And then firstly, uh, he's getting negative, all confirmed. He, and two days later, he's positive again. So for, for Theo, this Dakar is just disappointing story. And I feel so sorry for him because I, I, Theo is like, like my son. He, he's with us, he's living with the family, he's living with the team the whole year. We're racing together and Theo is a great chap and uh, his dad is helping him. It's a sad story. I, I, feel, I feel so, so sorry. So, uh, as we said, uh, it is a difference to, to run with one truck and two truck uh, on the field, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, we have been prepared, or we have everything for two trucks. We, we didn't expect it, Theo to, to run for the result in the first Dakar. It was the object is to be here, to, to train, to, to collect experience and help. The, his main objective was to help Ignacio in whatever situation, and, and we love this element. Now we are here. Uh, Ignacio will jump into the second half. Uh, it looks like, uh, even though uh, extraordinary logistic and management of the team, and of course uh, the work of all the mechanics, we will be able to prepare the track for, for the stage seven. Um, describe Ignacio as a driver because this is his second year and uh, since the beginning he's shown that he's really fast. Very simple. Ignacio equal ultimate professionality equal incredible athlete equal my great friend. Okay, <laughs> now a little bit more. Ignacio is, uh, should be, and he is the role model for all the young athletes. Uh, how, and they should, they should really learn, everybody should learn from Ignacio in terms of performance, in terms of communication, in terms in the way how, how he communicates with the team. And during the Dakar, there's many, many things and to be communicated with the team, unpleasant things to be communicated. And Ignacio always choose the way how to communicate with the team in order to motivate the people, not to disappoint the people. And that is, Ignacio is a Jew. I have to say it was a really good inspiration to see him um, and of course the mechanics after stage four, when we pulled the truck to the bivouac and uh, it was quite night already and we knew that the stage uh, five starts early in the morning and the mechanics basically after 700 kilometers of driving after spending uh, the whole day on the road they jump off the, the 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 assistance cars and immediately started to work on the truck the whole night without a sleep so ignacio can start in the morning the following stage it was really inspiration how he approached the mechanics to thank them that he can continue all the guys they they wouldn't mind to work ignacio ignacio three or five nights without having the minute of the sleep because they are dedicated to him they they, they love him they they respect him is this right way to do things. on the other side we have completely Definitely not saying uh, bad or wrong, but definitely a different men mentality of a driver by Joseph Makacek, which is, uh, of course, the language, because he can speak with the mechanics in, in Czech language, but uh, he's a very experienced uh, driver. His personality is uh, kind of uh, <laughs> negative sometimes, but uh, in, in a good way. Uh, what would you say about Joseph? Because after his experience, after his result, it, it doesn't happen just like this. Joseph is incredible. Look, the first thing, whoever is able to, to compete in the Dakar in the age of 64, upcoming 65, must be an extraordinary person. And in jo Joseph, he is. But regardless of that, he's, uh, he got this part of the mentality 
to to see always on the horizon some critical scenarios and disasters to come and <laughs> and we are even laughing about it because he's always trying to invent in his imagination the worst possible scenario to happen which is not really motivating sometimes not really motivating but obviously uh, maybe it motivates him because uh, to win six times on Dakar with this mentality, uh, it must be working. Uh, uh, luckily enough, the crew around around Joseph is is uh, mostly structured. There are the Czech guys around, and, and that is uh, the, this kind of genetical heritage of uh, Czech people to to see disasters and to see the life really much worse than it really is. So. It means the guys they they, they communicating on this uh, on this note with this tone, and probably they enjoying it. I don't. <laughs> okay, let's come to the categories. Uh, let's start with the three category that uh, Joseph won last year, and uh, already last year we had uh, we could see the the performance of Red Bull team and and uh, their drivers uh, uh, with OT3. How do you see this category now and in the future? It is really challenging to be competitive in this category because the, the balance between the weight of the car, performance and uh, endurance and, and reliability is uh, is real quiz. It's so difficult to make the car fast and reliable and light at the same time. Not easy, not easy. There's so many limiting factors and specifically now the FIA FIA entered, uh, entered the game so the policing of, of all the rules is much stronger than it used to be before. It is really challenging and the success in T3 category is definitely not designed for the small players. You, uh, you made a deal with Joseph for three years uh, in order to help you to build this category with his experience so he can uh, help uh, our young uh, talents to to participate in this category because as we can look at Seth Kinter, 19 years old, already six stage victories, even though he will not uh, be able to to win the, the overall, but he's got a new target to win, <laughs> to break the record of nine stage victories in one rally. Uh, Great respect to that, huh? by the way. Yes, <laughs> of course. But on the other side, we have uh, Aria, your daughter, that uh, on a high rally uh, one month ago she surprised quite uh, quite a lot everybody because uh, Childer, he did incredible yeah. job in, in, in three years time he helped us to to progress in the category he he won for us uh, t3 last dakar and then he's he's still doing the great job but what we have to say the the success is uh, in the hands of young generation now because Many young drivers coming and they are they are motivated. They they are fast. They are able to take the risk. Look the the, the Quintero. That Quintero is, is incredible guy. And there is many more. Is is it then the T three category the the enter to Dakar for the young uh, young uh, drivers because. Uh, Obviously, uh, the motivation, of course, is T1. That's the pro, let's say. Uh, yeah, and, and the T3 is the pro. Uh, three years ago, possibly, all of us been thinking that T3 would be kind of cheap, cheaper version of racing uh, compared to T1. It still is. But if you ask me if the T3 racing is cheap, definitely not. It, it, it is, it is uh, the cost. Development costs and, and everything is skyrocketing because all the big players enter the game. There is uh, obviously OT3 Red Bull, there is uh, South Racing Canam, there is Yamaha, there is PA Sport, there is the other, and uh, the battle is really open and, and, and the technology budget and development budget will, will skyrocket. In, in next two years, it will really skyrocket. I think the numbers always uh, tell the most. Today, this year, we have 120 uh, together with SSV uh, competitors in the game, which is... Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, in my view, it's kind of 
future of Dakar and the future of uh, cross country because it's still accessible. There will be probably there will be 10 players, there will be Red Bulls, so Red Bulls will be defining the game for a while, there will be kind of Kamas of 43 and there will be uh, South Racing, uh, Scott did in, in, he did an incredible job in depth of uh, service, setup, performance, uh, it's incredible. So, so there will be hard battle and I still believe the South Racing can be competitive to, to OT3, but to, to play this kind of top level uh, in T3 category will be uh, more and more difficult by chemical. You mentioned Kamas. Now, now let's shift a little bit to the trucks, T5. <laughs> How do you see the competition over there? Because obviously what Kamas is showing this year uh, with two new trucks, I think some of us uh, were thinking that with the new truck there always comes a little problem, but not for Kamas because since the beginning they basically uh, run every stage one, two, three, four, with some exceptions. How do you see that? I have tremendous respect to, to, the, to, to the work what they do. I respect the leadership of uh, Vladimir Chagin, the structure of the, of the team. Presently, if you see the structure of Kamas, amount of resources, uh, amount of testing kilometers throughout the year, nobody, nobody can compare, uh, compare himself to, to that. But Kamas doing a great job and look, they brought a new truck and they are competitive right away. They have no hiccups on the way. Yeah, they do just a great job, and many people just just throwing stone on on, on them and, and talking talk, talking bad. In my view, the dedication should be more like inspirational. But at the same time, I'm not really sure if somebody can reach that level. That was my question that I just prepared. Do you think it's even possible to to be them? Because what they show right now over here, I think it's impossible. I believe the second half of the car, they they they, uh, they will reset the risk reward parameters. They will little bit, they will a little bit more cautious. I believe that could be possible. In some stages, that somebody will be disturbing the dominance in terms of stage stage results. Overall, I don't see it's completely insignificant. And uh, at present time, I don't think it's really possible to to be them. It's just a simple math. If I if I see the, the the distances now, when they have more than one hour to the first non commas uh, truck, uh, if they only run the stage that they will let the fast one to overtake and they will just follow, basically you have no chance yeah, yeah. to to beat but, them. But, this but this kind of strategy. We we shouldn't forget the rest of the field because. Myself, I know how hard it is to, to get prepared and to be fast in Dakar. So there's many more teams, uh, Iveco, uh, Big Shock, uh, L'Opera team, many more teams doing a great job. And the, the Dutch team. Dutch teams, yeah, the Dutch team. Janus uh, this year really shown yeah, 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 that, uh, great performance. Many more teams doing a great job and I respect everybody who is able to, to, to be on, on the starting line of Dakar and, and, and bring these results and even survive that respect to all and teams doing great job but i'm not really sure if somebody is able to beat them as a trainer. okay i think you partly answered uh, my next question what do you think will follow now in the second half you can mention both categories t3 and t5 in t3 Seth Quintero will get under pressure to to achieve his target of, of, of record in terms of uh, stage victories so it can bring him uh, to the trouble, technically, that the car wouldn't last, but he wouldn't slow down. He got, he's really strong and he got the uh, balls big enough to, to keep up. There will be definitely many changes in, in the top 10 of T3 category, I expect, because, because the car is really demanding and we are just starting tomorrow, we're starting second half, so, so many things will happen. Uh, in track category, let's see who will survive. Because the pace this year is incredible. Even though we're always thinking by the end of each Dakar, oh, it's so fast, how come it's not possible to be fast, faster and faster again? Uh, it's proven to be, to be wrong. Because what 
for the pace the track that we're running this year is, is out of out of this world. It's kind of impossible. To do. It's, it's so fast. Uh, before the car, I saw the organizer of the car ready, and uh, of course to the front, and not to mention, uh, has uh, made the joint venture with the FIA and then created the World Championship uh, of Rally Cross Country. Uh, how do you see this this step? Because I remember in the past we discussed this many times that uh, already the cross country rallies have a good participation, but not the, not uh, such great uh, visibility like, uh, for example, Rally Dakar. And now with this move and uh, this joint venture, it's, it's great. It's a, it will be great platform, a challenging platform, extremely expensive platform to 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 be in. Uh, for for uh, the a ASO will lose the flexibility because in the past the organizer of Dakar used to react flexibly to, to any new scenario. So I don't believe that it, uh, under the, the, the wings of FIA they would be able to be flexible enough because there is a structure structure in place and uh, it's good and bad. But it's a new platform. But from, from the perspective of our team, we are not participating uh, in the World Championship this year. We have no means to do so. We will observe the year number one. I think uh, in all the categories there will be some unexpected winners, probably. Because not many people will participate really in, in this year. So let, let, let's observe what is happening. But for year 2023 we are expecting to be uh, part of this championship in, in the full swing. How uh, Bagheera team will continue in the second half and uh, what is the motivation? And also, what is the target? So T3, we will stay fast and safe. So, which obviously doesn't go together, but we will try to, to move up in, in the top 10. So if we reach somewhere close to top 5, I will be extremely happy and, 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 and satisfied. Um, in terms of track T5, uh, uh, we don't have this this pressure for us because we are basically out of uh, overall. We are still part of the rally, but we lost some some hours due to technical troubles. So for us, it will be meaningful to make the stage stage results, and at the same time, we have decided to test some new components uh, for 2023. Could be possibly possibly a little bit risky, but there is no better way to test your your, your technology and your team somewhere else than in Dakar. So, good part on, on the happening now is that we can do our work and looking forward and, and uh, do our extensive testing for Dakar 2023. And that's it. Basically, uh, we thank you all who uh, reached the final of our uh, chit chat and um, thank you for crossing fingers for us and maybe uh, we see you another time. Thank you, Joel.